So, um, Gypsy Rose Blanchard made worldwide headlines when she was convicted of orchestrating her mother's murder in 2015, claiming that she did it to escape a lifetime of relentless child abuse. Now, for the first time, she's telling her story in her own words in the new documentary series, The Prison Confessions of Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Take a look. I remember my mom said, happy endings are not just in fairy tales, they're real. My mother controlled everything I did. I was forced to use a wheelchair. She started telling people that I had cancer. But none of it was true. There was also a lot of emotional and physical abuse. I started to feel like it was either her or me. Didi Blanchard's death was violent. And that's when I hear her calling my name. Gypsy, help me. Her daughter, Gypsy Blanchard, and her boyfriend are now jailed on first-degree murder. I played a part in asking him to commit the murder. That is why I'm in prison. I've had six years to feel those emotions. And there's things that I've kept so private. The reason why I want to talk about it now is because I want to be free of all the disturbing secrets. Please welcome Gypsy Rose Blanchard. Show. Nice you. to have you Thank here. You. So, um, you were released from prison just a week ago. Yes, that is correct. I mean, that's yeah. just, a, you know, like yesterday. Right. You served eight years of a 10-year sentence. Mm -hmm. um, number one, how are you doing? Number two, you say that prison changed you. Mm -hmm. How did that happen? Tell us about it. Um, well, I'm doing great. Um, yeah. I'm in New York City for the first time. Oh. Um, I know I, I'm enjoying my freedom. I'm taking it day by day. Yeah. Um, it feels really, really nice to be um, out in the free world. How did prison change you? Um, prison, prison actually was actually very um, helpful for me. Um, I, I always say that if I didn't go to prison, I don't think that I would have acclimated to the outside world as easily as I have now. Um, That's it, interesting. Yeah, it gave, so your it, life was less the world than prison. You said exactly. you were more free in prison. Yes, the freest yes, you'd yes, ever I was, felt was yes. the first day you were in prison, wow. which mm -hmm. tells you a little bit about the mindset. Yeah. But um, Gypsy Rose, you suffered for years as a victim of uh, Munchausen syndrome by proxy. Your mother, Dee Dee, tricked everyone, doctors, your family, the community, into believing you were chronically ill when in fact you were perfectly healthy. Right. Uh, she claimed you had leukemia, muscular dystrophy, forced you to shave your head, mm -hmm. use a wheelchair, insert a feeding tube. Yeah. What was your mindset under your mother's control? Um, you know, my mindset was very, um, very submissive. I always wanted to please my mom. Um, I, I grew up as a people pleaser, and that's something that I've actually worked really hard to change over the last couple of years. Um, but I just never wanted to risk disappointing her or making her mad. Well, she also toyed with your emotions as very much she would so. favor yeah. the cat Yes, over yes, you but there was a lot of manipulation tactics going mm. on um, to where I felt like if I, if I did something that she didn't like, she would take away her love. When all a child wants is love. Mm -hmm. So playing off your very existence and your instincts, mm -hmm. she manipulated you from the day you were born. Mm -hmm. um, but how do you think she was able, she had a, you had your most painful surgery was when your salivary glands in your neck were removed mm -hmm. because your mom convinced doctors that you were drooling too much? Yes, yes. When in fact she had put something on your gums to mm -hmm. numb you and you were drooling? Mm -hmm. How did she convince doctors to yeah. do these things? Yeah. You know, I, I just don't understand myself, and that's something that is it's going to be hard to understand going forward because I have to live with those things now. I have to live with the scars on my body and look in the mirror and know where that came from. Mm. Um, and so it, it's... It's not only a emotional trauma, but it's a physical trauma. But your mom had an experience as a health professional, right? So she did. She had. She was in nursing school when she was younger. Yes. Does not a doctor make? Nor does she, should she have ever done the thing she did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And my understanding also is that you lived in Louisiana mm -hmm. and then moved. And when doctors asked for your medical records, mm -hmm. she said uh, that they were lost in Hurricane Katrina. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and I think you're very brave for being here. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you. For telling your story. I think it will help a lot of people. Thank you. Um, the question, though, that I think a lot of people have, I don't have it, mm -hmm. is this. 
why didn't you try telling a family member mm -hmm. or the police maybe that you weren't sick? Why resort to murder? Well, you know, I did try to run away, and I talk about this in the documentary. Yeah. Um, I talk about the first time that I tried to run away from home. Within four hours, I got as far as it's outside of town. And within four hours, she brought me back to the home, chained me to the bed, mm. um, left me there for two weeks, mm. two weeks without a lot of food, water. I had to urinate on myself or in a bucket yeah. as she, you know, held the chain. So. Um, mm. You know, I was in the mindset of, I'm so afraid of her. I'm so afraid that if I reach out for help another time, what will, it will be worse for me. Yeah. So is that why you didn't say anything to the doctor too when he removed exactly, your salivary Exactly, my, my mother was uh -huh. in the room with me at every single doctor's appointment, uh -huh. every surgery. Yeah. The only time that she was ever not with me was actually in the operating room itself. Yeah. Mm. So you, you pleaded guilty in 2016 to second degree murder uh, for conspiring with your then ex-boyfriend, Nick, go to John uh, to kill your mother. Mm -hmm. You were sentenced to 10 years, he was sentenced to life in prison. Right. Um, I love in the documentary, you take, you take responsibility. You talk mm -hmm. about, you know, you, you were doing the time that you were given, um, but he will spend the rest of his life in jail. How, how do you feel about that? How do you kind of reconcile that? Um, you know, I know that we both probably have a lot of regrets. I know I have regrets. Um, I can't speak for him, so I really don't know his side of things. Um, all I know is, you know, I did my time. He's doing his time. Um, that's all the best that I could do at this point. Like, for me, I have to focus on myself right now. I can't look in the past and worry about him or anything else going on. I have to prioritize myself in this moment. I just got released from prison after eight and a half years, and then I didn't have a life before that. So mm. I have a lot to process and go through right How now. How old are Gypsy you now, if I may ask? I'm 32, actually. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Gypsy Rose, um, she was your torturer. She was your captor. But she was also your mom. Right. So when you think back on your mom right now, how do you feel about her? And does any part of you miss her, feel Yes, yes, love? yes, of, of course. Like, um, at first, I was really upset finding out all of these things that she had done to me and just kind of the web that was going on of lies and uncovering that. I felt very angry at the beginning after my arrest. Um, and then after eight and a half years, I've come to realize that she suffered a lot from mental illness. Mm. How do you work through those emotions? How do you work through the... I, I give myself patience. I give myself grace to take it day by day. And if I feel angry in one moment, let me feel that. If I feel remorse and, and sorry, um, there was one time on the, an the anniversary of, of the crime is actually the hardest day of the year. Do you have, are you going through psychotherapy? Yes, I am, I am. And so what I do on the anniversary is I play one of her favorite songs mm -hmm. and I allow myself that time to cry. And I mean, ball cry mm. because I feel like I can't do it in front of other people because I'm afraid of being judged for it because they're probably going to make some kind of snarky comment like, well, you killed her. Um, but I'm like, you know, she was my mom and I miss her even though everything she, that she did to me, she was still my mother. I had spent 24 years of my life with her. 